Good morning. Hi, I'm Walt Bartman and I'm the founder and director of the Yellow Barn Studio at Glen Echo. And today we're going to interview one of our instructors, Denise Dittmar, who's been teaching for us for a number of years. And uh, her specialty is working with um, students, particularly younger students. Uh, she has a lot of background in uh, working with what we call the emerging artist uh, classes which uh, really are directed at younger students. And then uh, she's also teaching uh, another class as well, which is, a, a, I believe, a still life class. Uh, but anyhow, I'm going to introduce her now. So I'm going to say good morning, uh, Denise. How are you? Good morning, Walt. Thank you so much for allowing this opportunity to get to know people and, and yeah, to this talk is a her. This is a great way, isn't it, to uh, go on YouTube and uh, be able for uh, people to look at look you up and um, you know, you're one of the important members of the Yellow Barn uh, faculty. So I think, uh, you know, because of uh, the years that you've worked for me and, uh, you know, the classes that you've taught, uh, there's always been a, a strong interest in, in your classes. So um, we're going to start by just me asking you some questions and you can uh, tell me what, uh, you know, a little bit about yourself first. You can go, go and touch on uh, your background, how you started, where you were born, so on. Okay, thanks. Uh, well, I grew up in New Jersey, and I did get a Bachelor's of Arts in Studio Art at Rutgers University. Um, at that time, I thought I might be an art teacher, but instead I tried some other things, and I eventually got a Master's in Landscape Architecture from University of Pennsylvania. So I knew I had strong graphic uh, visual spatial skills and I wanted to help use it, use those skills to do something positive in the world. Eventually I wound up in North Texas and that at that time I switched from landscape architecture and decided to get in, back into teaching and I got my certification to teach high school art. I also got a master's in uh, humanities from University of Texas at Dallas focusing on visual studies. And that had also gave me an opportunity to get back to painting again, which I, I love. And then eventually moved to North, uh, Northern Virginia and discovered Glen Echo, discovered Walt Bartman and the Yellow Barn and had a wonderful wake, awakening moment as an, an artist uh, rediscovering my roots in painting. And Walt Bartman was a fabulous teacher for me, still is. I will still continue to take classes for, or workshops from Walt on occasion. There are some other very talented people there. Uh, John Murray, um, Maude Tabor Thomas. Um, I learned so much from them and I incorporate everything I learned. I think people can continue to learn as they go through their art journey and keep taking classes, keep trying new things. I do it. And I, I'm not, I'm, I'm humble about it because I'm just a still learning. We all are. So, uh, yeah, this is, I, yeah, <laughs> this is interesting. I, I want, I wanted to ask you a, a little question about the, your teaching, since you're really uh, committed to teaching, you really love teaching. You're teaching a, a younger group of students uh, with this emerging artist class. Um, what is it uh, about that class that um, you uh, enjoy so much? And uh, what do you want them to uh, get out of the class? I really love working with students um, and young students with their eager minds and their curiosity and their openness is, is such a, an energy builder and something that we share kind of a, an energy back and forth. I like to give them opportunities to create. I, I started with young children, pre, I have worked with preschoolers, I've worked with elementary age and middle school students. And uh, it's the middle school and high school students that are part of the emerging young artist class. And I was very grateful that you let me create that class because it provided a real bridge for the early learning to their transition to becoming young adults. Um, I love that they can express themselves they have a need, we all have a need to express ourselves because it's times are hard and we have emotions, we have ideas and visually expressing yourself is a wonderful imaginative outlet. It's also 
can create something beautiful and lasting and meaningful. So I love the, working with the students because they ask me for specific things that I wouldn't have thought of. They, some of them work electronically. I have a variety of students that do use a media that isn't just painting or drawing. They electronically, some of them will even play around with sculptural elements and all of that can be incorporated in a in that sort of class. I do like working with adults. They are very good at listening. Teenagers tend to want to do their own direction, which is fabulous, but they they miss some opportunities to try some things sometimes, occasionally. Yeah, you do such a good job. I mean, uh, when I look at the, the program and I look at the, the nurturing that you bring to it, I think that any student that's uh, apprehensive about taking a class uh, really shouldn't be with you. You really are able to uh, talk to the students in a way that, uh, you know, really makes them um, comfortable, but also inspired. And I, and I feel you do that uh, quite well. Uh, the uh, adult class that you're teaching, what is that about? Well, this time around, it I did teach at Still Life last year, which I love, but I wanted to take off on what I learned from Maud, who's amazing uh, about faces, forms, and the human figures. So basically it's focused on that. I do have an opportunity for people to pursue their own uh, projects that may be people related. It might also create, they, if they would like to use objects, photographs of things, landscapes, that can be incorporated as well. So it's an experimental studio. I work really well with people who are just beginning. I work well with intermediate people who are building on what they know and they, they're gaining confidence. I, I like to draw on art history. That's something I wanted to throw out. I taught AP art history in a high school in Texas for five years. And I, I gained a lot of knowledge teaching that class. And I'd like to bring that to any students I teach. So I, I rely on uh, references to artists that are current, that even cutting edge, and and ones from recent history. I myself oh. am, have been highly influenced by Impressionists, and not only that, but Walt Bartman, obviously, and painting clean air. That's an amazing experience in itself, something we're not doing right now as much, unless we're doing it on our own. Yeah. But... This is uh, this is this is a good question. I thank you so much for uh, you know enjoying taking my classes. The thing that I would um, uh, like to know because of the virtual learning, how's that? How's that as a um, uh, a new approach to teaching? It's actually pretty good because uh, I get to present some material to students that they wouldn't focus on in a classroom as much, especially young people. Um, they miss the social interaction within the room, but they actually can talk to each other. And they this a lot of them know each other or have gotten to know each other. So I what I like to do is uh, we break we talk to each other at the beginning. We we say what's on our mind, and then we uh, do a sketch problem together, and then we share it and we look at each other's sketch problem, and then we take on a larger project. We we look at, uh, say we're doing landscape, we look at a few examples of landscapes by Monet, by uh, Edward Hopper, any any artists that are, are relevant to the particular topic. And then um, we select maybe from pictures, maybe from, they are welcome to bring their own pictures. And at that point we are beginning, I'm drawing and painting while, while they're watching and they are drawing and painting while while I'm doing that. They may not be doing the same thing. They probably aren't, but that's okay. They shouldn't be. They should be choosing what subject they want to pursue. Mm -hmm. so, as I said, some are working electronically as well. Yeah, this is, uh, for all of us, this is a new uh, thing. And, you know, just doing this video is a great example. Uh, we're all now filmmakers. I mean, this is one of the things that Zoom has let, uh, let happen. But at the same time, it's, it's a different format but it's here to stay. And I think that uh, I, I don't know how you're 
going to deal with it, but I know in my classes, uh, they'll be both virtual and, um, you know, on site when we return to the classroom. Uh, how do you feel about that? Oh, I think it'd be great to keep a, a, a connection to virtual. There are some who won't be able to make it. Um, we can also record a class and also to be able to focus on on images and really see them. Students can also take pictures of the screen and then watch it later. You can record it and, and, and show it later. Like I yeah, said. this is this is really great. And I think we're now we're uh, kind of, uh, you know, we're, we're all getting really good at this. So I think, you know, looking at your lighting and your uh, what's behind you, people get an idea of, uh, you know, that, that you can very easily do a demo and things like that, and they are able to see it. Okay, so we're going to go on. We're going to go on to your um, your work. Okay, you as an artist, and uh, and perhaps maybe you can describe to um, everyone a little bit about what you're about as an artist and how you came to being. Uh, I think you touched on some of it uh, earlier, but how you came to become a, an artist to begin with. Oh, that's an amazing question. Yeah, I... the long one, I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, so pe why do people come to art, you know, when they're in high school? They find that they like to draw and they it's a release and they get better and better as they draw or they paint. And they realize that that's something they're good at. They also try to look for other things. I actually was interested in science for a while and uh, that's landscape architecture overlaps that ecology um, planning and so on and I am concerned for the environment so landscape painting connection is very strong um, so I'm sorry what's the next well, I think the, the, the main thing is now when we look at your work what is it I know that most of the work is focused on the landscape uh, there are other elements that you're dealing with as far as the um, um you know your work is concerned um you know perhaps maybe okay. we can just go to the we you know we can go right now to the uh to the shared screen and you can you can discuss it that way let's do that okay okay well that's all right good. so here here's where we're gonna go we're gonna share the screen uh hopefully uh, because sometimes this doesn't always work do you see the powerpoint yes i do okay and we're gonna start with a slideshow start from the start and uh, Denise is, uh, you know, like I mentioned, is uh, teaching these uh, these classes that we have. I think when we touch on uh, looking at her work, you'll get a feel for, um, you know, what you'll what to expect when you study with her. So uh, you can just start discussing some of these pieces and, uh, you know, what's what motivated them and what you were trying to do, and you know, we'll go from there. All right. Um I want to point out this is something right outside my on my deck. I made some decisions about where to locate things, um, and it is last fall actually. It isn't this fall's pick painting. Um, one of the interesting things about being an art teacher is you learn a lot of art vocabulary, and you really get to understand how to analyze an artwork. So I would say one of the things you might notice is the the flowers and the vase is definitely an off center focal point. And it's sort of the heart of the piece. It connects to the other objects on the table. And yet reaching out into the color, warm colors behind of the fall foliage. So we've got the cool green and the vibrant orange red going on and a blue sky. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful contrasts to me. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the yellow flowers are kind of definitely a focal point. They're not in the middle. They're off to the right. So. Um, uh, this was an oil painting, and I had just gone back to oil with the help of Walt Bartman. It, it's a big step to go back, go from acrylic to oil again. Uh, acrylic is a safe place and it's a little easier to use, but a little less expressive. Mm -hmm. um, one of the decisions I made in this painting also, there is a railing, and the railing is white. That would have destroyed this piece, so I made I pushed it back. You have to make decisions as, as an artist to change the color if you need to because you want people to see things you don't want them to be distracted by extra things you have to leave things out you have to and and i also one of the things i really 
liked about my own work is the expressive curving tree trunks and I try to bring you back down into the flowers and how the flowers lean to one side and the punctuation point of the apple and the oranges. So. Yeah, it really is a, a you know a re really strongly designed piece. And maybe we can speak a little bit about this. Uh, you said that you were influenced by the Impressionists. Do you particularly like Impressionism? Uh, do you consider yourself an Impressionist? I, I definitely consider myself an Impressionist when I paint uh, outside. And it's outside is a challenge. I've It's quite a, you have to deal with things that are there. You have to block it out. You don't, you want to see it in 3D. You don't want to just work from a photo if you have the opportunity. We don't all have that opportunity right now, so it's harder. Um, it's, uh, yes, yeah, I'm impressionist. The brush stroke, the expressive marks that repeat. There are some areas that are blended. I, I think back to Georgia O'Keeffe, how so much of her nature work is so beautiful, but it isn't brush strokes. It's very blended but also extremely dramatic. So I'm definitely influenced by her as well as one of my heroes um, from the art world. Yeah, I, th I see, um, you know, the, 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 the touch being an important part of your work, uh, the expressive quality of the paint. Uh, you can really feel the, uh, the strength of your painting. Uh, your design work here, like I said, uh, was quite good. And uh, it's interesting when you commented about the railing, this is something that people need to realize that they uh, they orchestrate ideas. So let's go on to the next one. Oh, yes. This is a, a building that's a historic building in a park nearby, a Claude Moore Park. It's an old colonial uh, home plus an inn. And actually painted it on site, or I started it and I finished some of it at home. But Walt was the one who, who taught me to really look at buildings in a landscape as well as looking at Edward Hopper type paintings, you know, is the perspective straight on building like a landscape architect might draw, or are you going to draw it so it kind of recedes at the top? And where is the lighting coming from? Um, that you might realize the front of the building is white, yes, but it's in shadow, so how do you treat that? And I did go, I did go in my own direction with the sky. I, felt a blue sky was not going to work. It might have been a gray day that day. I don't recall. No, actually, it's very sunny now that we see the dark shadow. So so it's kind of a challenge. You piece it together, you change it, you modify. That is the direction of sunset right now for that building, too. Yeah, this is a this is a piece that speaks very strongly emotionally. And I think that you um, when you look at the, the idea, uh, it's very much a hopper-like building, meaning that it uh, feels empty, uh, you know, there was a period of time, perhaps maybe when it was, uh, you know, looking at the architecture was, a, a you know, it, it, it dates the, the idea, but at the same time, the emotion of the, uh, the change of season and the fact that the tree is, uh, you know, bare and against the house, that also speaks of a, a certain period of the, uh, the feeling that you, you communicate. Uh, th this is a very emotional and I think expressive piece. So we're going to go on to the next one. Yes, I felt this was my first real success. Uh, Walt took us to uh, Brook Brookside Gardens. Yeah, Brookside. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, wow, it was beautiful foliage. Gosh, remember those days when you can get out there and, and paint outside and, and nobody worried. It, it just happened that this came together so beautifully. I love Japanese art. I've been to Japan. This is the edge of the Japanese garden looking across a pond. It was spring and just being able to capture those impressions, yes, the, the light on the flowers, the, the streaks in the water, the, the, the way the red tree leans over. It's just, uh, it worked. This was one of my best successes, uh, paint, especially painting outside. Which is yeah, this is, uh, you know, this really speaks of uh, being an impressionist for sure in the way you've uh, communicated, uh, the, just the unique way of seeing the space. When you're painting, is there any uh, thing that you're working toward? What What do you think you're focused on? Is it color important that you're really going after? Is it the, uh, the emotion of the place? What is it that you're you're looking for? 
Wow. Well, I think it's, it's kind of too ambitious to say all of those things, but it is true. Um, one of the things I like to do when I do a painting is to do a, a kind of an underpainting. Uh, I don't recall if I actually did that with this one. So I can locate the major pieces, like a jigsaw puzzle, and see how they fit together. And those pieces always have, each shape has, a, has an emotion and resonates. I'm, the ultimate goal of this painting was to show the light. And that's always a goal that you promoted as well, Well, mm -hmm. um, To bring the light out, to let the light remain, some of it was, I left the canvas and just touched lightly white on it later. So go working from dark to light, that's, that's kind of the steps I used. I think yep. emotion, mm -hmm. I make sure that I have honored the site, but that it has an emotion of some kind, a feeling. If I feel like I've not done that, I go back and try to think, how can I bring that feeling out? Yeah, this is, uh, you know, when I look at this, this is a, a, a really close to being abstract uh, because nothing really holds us too long. We're really moving when we talk in terms of the visual rhythm, there's a natural feel to it. And so I think, you know, that ties with the impressionist idea as well. Okay, so the next piece. Oh, yeah, this painting went through a lot. Um, I live near the Potomac River. I love to walk along it and I have taken a lot of photographs. I've also just observed it so many times. So this one is catching the light across the river, looking at the islands and just the, the quality of light on that particular moment in a photograph that I have was fabulous. I did change it somewhat. I wanted to pull out the, the ripples that I saw some other times, the way the path of the light shone across the water in a diagonal. Um, and I did abstract the, the island shapes. I, I like to work with abstraction. I actually have done gone through uh, some abstract art work that I've done that I don't usually do at Glen Echo, but I, it's definitely underlying a lot of my work, the abstract patterns and simplification. Going yeah, this is a really powerful, abstract. this is a very powerful piece for me, I think because of the contrast and because of the palette, both, both the contrast in color and the contrast in uh, the values that you use. Uh, you said, you mentioned that you work from photos for this one? Uh, I did. I started with a photo, but I actually put it aside and work from memory and intuition. Mm -hmm. I might pull it out again, but I, I didn't remain absolutely true to the photo. Yeah, I, I see that in your work too. I, when you touched on the term memory, you do bring a lot of memory. Your work is not, you know, when we look at the sources, uh, they feel, it feels natural. It feels like it's in the present. Uh, it, uh, you know, it's an immediate moment. Uh, everything's fresh. It's one of the things about your brushstroke, which I think is really quite, quite good. And, um, you know, here is a great example of you being able to deal with a different attitude towards space, which I think, uh, you know, sometimes I guess, uh, being in a location will, will present itself to you. Uh, but here, you know, it really speaks of that interesting distance that you've created. So the next one is this one. Oh, uh, yes. Um, Meadowlark Gardens in Virginia. I went there on a field trip for myself. I saw so many beautiful things this fall. This is a, a recent fall picture. And this was probably the best image. I, I did work strongly from a photo with this. I didn't actually draw it there. I am working on a finishing a plein air piece from there, but I, I have, haven't finished it yet. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, again, the Japanese influence, there's the bridge, there's the water to the left, and the tree, that red tree is struggling to come forward and, and be the main, the main event, and it duels with the water and the reflection, which is altered. So I, I don't know what to say about it, except I, it's it's a place I loved, and I love this seeing this beautiful, tranquil setting. I well, you know the, the thing that I get when I look at your work, and this is a this is a piece that I think uh, illustrates this, is your um, you really your work is you. You really uh, I mean I know your temperament. I know the way you respond to things, 
And, um, you know, the beauty of nature is one of the things that you uh, look to. And, and uh, you know, like you said, uh, you know, being immersed in this kind of uh, surroundings, you, you really bring that, uh, I think, to whoever's looking at this piece. Uh, and it, and it, it speaks of a certain period of the season again because of the, the blossoming of the tree. So the next one. Um, this was part of my uh, exploration of still life. And I feel this one is, I, it's not really finished to me, but I love the, the tulips. The tulips really came together. The apple, the object on the table. I feel like that needs a little work. I do like the calmness of the white behind. This was actually painted in the yellow barn. You might recognize the, the bookcase behind. And I work with some other students. I like to paint along with my students. So I started this with them. Um, some painted a different view of it. These were adults last year. And uh, actually there were some teens in the class as well. Yeah, this is a, a very classical composition. When you look at the uh, verticals and horizontals, it's different from the uh, when you're outdoors. You, t you tend to be um, more uh, amorphic when you look at your shapes, but here you, you can see how uh, the geometry is repeated in everything. And I think that's what makes it strong. That and, you know, just the, the length of the, of the vase, that, that, that tallness is communicated, which I think is an, an interesting dynamic as well. I love the color combinations in this painting, and I like the way you created the sense of focus. So I, I believe you, you got a really successful piece. And also, you know, it speaks of balance. When I, I think this is one of the things that I see in your work is a sense of balance as well. You're really a, a good, uh, you know, you have a good understanding of that as to what to emphasize and what how to construct. Uh, just for instance, the apple, uh, the one leaf is pointing to the apple, which uh, I think is, and then there's another one that's carrying us to the, to the left which shifting us to the left side of the painting and making us uh, see for sure everything that's going on there. But then there's a lot of sense of repetition too. Uh, does this come out of your uh, background in design? Um, I really don't know. I think just observation. Um, uh, also the teachers at Yellow Marn, like John Murray, I think he helped, it, helped mm -hmm. me figure out how objects can play against each other and move you around through a space. Mm -hmm. um, I loved your description of the leaves pointing. That's something I actually didn't think about. Right. Um, I think very strongly about how the lighting is coming in as well. So we, we play around with that. Is there a cast shadow? Um, and light hitting glass and water is just like a gift from the heavens. You, know, mm -hmm. you can really do so much with that. Yeah, this is and this is a very interesting palette. It deviates from what you you've been doing, which is, uh, this is a very strong uh, value study when you look at the range of going from light to dark. So then the next one. Yes, this is an acrylic painting that, uh, so acrylics is, have, has its own challenges. And I did this with uh, some painting friends. We were, were trying to set up a still life that we would all take on as a challenge. Um, and I, it was playing with multiple pictures, so you have kind of a different perspectives. So there's some playing around with reality going on here, but there's so much realism in the plant and maybe the fruit, even though it's very impressionist looking. And then the large sculptures and the sculpture of the horse and the light coming through the alabaster, is, uh, and the light on the table, that was all based on what really was there. I added a few features like the shells because there was, it was missing things. Uh, I, I added more light uh, in the background because it had gotten too dark. Uh, I like the way the circles kind of repeat themselves through here. That's what I saw when this, we set up our still life. And knowing what to leave out of a still life as well as what to put in is pretty important. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. I, I, I don't know how if, if this is one of your favorites, but I really like the way you uh, challenge us to look down and you really weave things. I mean, it's really interesting how we move from uh, one section of the painting to another, but yet the painting feels unified as a whole. 
it's really it's really quite quite interesting colors especially the fact that the, the, there's so much red that we really feel it uh feel it almost internally okay it, it has that quality to it um uh is there anything else you want to say about this particular piece uh, I think one of the things that I learned from you was expressive brush, and I let that happen, especially in the sh shadows on the table and in the fruit. So I, yeah, that pattern is very more smooth. But the expressive brush, when you can do it, it's so powerful. So yeah, it is. It's and you do that well. Now we get to something that's so different, and this speaks of your. Uh, from my point of view, one of the things about you is that you are a very complex person. You, I mentioned the fact that the, the um, students were going to get a nurturing uh, environment, but at the same time, you have a, a, the ability to, uh, you know, do something that uh, is unexpected here, especially after looking at your work and the impressionistic uh, quality of your work. Maybe you speak a little bit about this particular piece. Uh, I love the idea of promoting women and um, mystery, uh, mythology. This is could represent the three fates or three elements of nature. I, the different phases of the moon and possibly sun in the background. It's not deliberately scripted. Uh, it, it's sort of evolved. I knew there would be three, three figures. They changed a lot. Um, this is like the old fashioned way of painting where you have an idea and you develop it as you go. I guess I invented mostly those figures. I've done a lot of figure study over time. I did refer to a photo just to make sure I was getting the facial planes right on one of the characters. Um, I felt that the brushwork is, I wanted it, I, it's kind of a cross between abstract and, and uh, representational, um, but I wanted to use experimental, it's it's acrylics too, mm -hmm. so you, you do different experimentation in acrylic versus oil. Streaks, um, dripping, there was originally, there's a lot of background texture from previous work that I used to try to incorporate. So I, lay, I take an old painting and I'll layer on top of it. Um, so this, is a lot, this painting took you a lot longer than the other paintings. The other ones are, tend to be more immediate. This is a uh, one that you've worked on. How long do you think? Uh, well, I I've, I've been playing with it for two, three years. Yeah. So I go back to it, and it, I think it's finished right now. So I'm not going to do more to it right now. It's, but I, yeah, this is more of a let's think this out. What's working about it? I learned as I go went. Um, and the, the the number three is very important. I've used that again in other work. Um, it's symbolic. It's like a trinity. It's the three fates, uh, which are rule our lives from Greek mythology. Um, it's also women, the power of women, because I, I basically grew up in an era when women needed to take on the role of strength themselves. They needed to just claim it own it and so yeah. this is to promote that yeah this is a very interesting piece you know it feels klimt like in the klimt figures the way they kind of move together uh the um but it also you know has a, um, a sense to it you know you like you said you touched on the history and influences you know the fates and uh you know i i really like the surface of this particular painting as well i think that it goes with the idea uh, very, very strongly. So then uh, this piece? Uh, this is my most recent uh, experiment. It's still in progress. I it's and I, I did this through Maud's class with a wonderful group that she has. Um, and it's experimental uh, portrait painting. I chose to do do Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Kamala Harris, and Greta Thunberg as the three faiths. And they also represent different ages of people. Um, it, it needs a little bit more work. Uh, I'm not totally satisfied with uh, the center figure. She's she's close, but she's not there yet. Mm -hmm. It's also very current that white outfit she's wearing. She wore recently uh, when she accepted the 
I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it was the night that the election happened. I, I, I can't recall exactly. Yeah. So we have a lot of concerns, women, women's concerns, political concerns. I don't want to get political, but I do feel like we need to promote women to help make the world better. And this well, is one way to do it. Yeah, and well, you know, I think the justice... Sorry. Yeah. And I think that you touch on something that I think is really important for anyone. And that is you have to be inspired to make ideas. And, and there are th certain things that inspire you and challenge you. And, you know, this is an experimental piece, which means that you didn't have a, a, a reference like a photo where you could just have three figures all in a line. You really uh, are inventing and, and you can see the use of uh, your awareness and your sensitivity. And, you know, I, I think that the, the passion for ideas or uh, certain subjects, I mean, those are important. Artists have to ex express them. That's what we, we do. And I, I feel you, you show this in the dimension of your work, which I think is a surprise because I think when you start off with the Impressionist pieces, they tend to be just immediate and of the, of the place. But now you're going into a, a more what we would uh, say is it has deeper meaning. Okay, from the standpoint of the uh, symbolism of each one of these ages of people, uh, but yet at the same time, they're individual personalities. So the next one. Uh, this one is a way to study the face through, and then Walt, well, you gave me this idea, use sculpture, <laughs> pictures yeah. of sculpture, have a sculpture in your house that you can study since it's very hard to work with a model uh, while we're isolated. Um, though there are models available, and I appreciate that Gazelle is available, and you can, anyway. This one um, is a humanization of an idealized sculpture to me, and it got way more expressive than the actual Greek-Roman sculpture. Uh, that, and I would say, I was talking about this with some other people. It, Lucian Freud comes to mind. I'm not saying I'm Lucian Freud, but I would say I, I, he's inspiring me to interpret the face and the shadows and, and the figure. Yeah, and I think that, you know, when we look at the naturalism in this, like you said, you do bring a, a, a feeling, an underlying feeling that I think sculptors are trying to reach as well in the material as that humanness. So you really do that well. This is a monochromatic piece, meaning that you're really working with this limited palette. Uh, it's also very cool color, which is, different from a lot of your paintings. Your paintings tend to be on the warm side, so or or medium, meaning greens to reds to yellows. Uh, so this is one that where you have a lot of the uh, the, the blue. Let's go on. I guess that's it now. So what we're going to do is uh, just, you know, sum up this. Um, you know, one of the things I want to say to the uh, anyone who's watching this video is that you're getting a, a real good understanding of um, you know what Denise uh, is about, and I think that you know from the standpoint of studying with her, I definitely re recommend that you consider taking a class with her. Uh, she's um, definitely got a lot of interesting uh, things to teach, and I and I feel that uh, you know one of the, one of the things that you see about her is her sensitivity, and that's in her work, as well as the way she talks about working with her students. So Denise, do you have anything else you'd like to say before we end this interview? Uh, no, thank you for the nurturing place you've made, the, the Yellow Barn. Uh, it's a wonderful place of creativity. I look forward to working with anyone who is available who would like to have studio time online. And uh, critiquing is really what one of the strengths of the Yellow Barn, and I'm available for for that during a class as well yeah this is great and uh, thank you all for watching this uh we'll uh if you're interested you can go to yellowbarnstudio.com and uh, look uh, up uh, denise's classes as well as other classes that are available and we hope to see you in the future taking classes at the yellow barn thank you again bye